You better start white knuckling your chair because yes, we are going to do a tier list of the best new gaming CPUs on the market today. Now, I won't have every single CPU, but we are going to be taking a look at AM4, AM5, and the 13th generation from Intel. Before that, this video is brought to you by VIPCDKDeals.com. CDK Deals is a website dedicated to getting you the best prices on games and software, and right now you can get a Windows 10 Pro OEM key for an insanely low price. Just find the best price and apply my special discount code GPC20 for an additional 30% off. You can also check out securely with PayPal, and once the payment is cleared, you should get access to the code both in your account as well as in your email. In order to activate the new copy of Windows 10, just search Active activate under Windows and type in your key. So if you want to learn more, be sure to click the link in the description below. Let's go ahead and start off with the 5700X 3D. Now this could be a great option for those of you out there who are still on AM4. Maybe you have an older or slower CPU this will bring you very substantial performance improvements. I mean, you're getting eight cores and 16 threads and that X3D cache for just roughly $200 over on Amazon, which by the way, if you are interested in picking up any of these CPUs, I will have affiliate links in the description below. So please do be sure to go ahead and use those. But because you're getting such great specs for such a great price on a very affordable platform, I mean, you can get some pretty decent motherboards for like a hundred bucks. I think this is honestly, ah, I don't know if this is A tier, S tier. I think it's got to go into A tier simply because, yeah, it's not the fastest, but it is very, very good for the price. Now, the 5800X3D is basically the same thing with higher clock speeds, but it is coming in at a much higher price over on Amazon at just roughly $324, although you might want to check because it can change drastically. So I think this one actually at its current price is gonna have to slot in. I know this is gonna be controversial, but C tier. If it's a better price, if you notice that it's far cheaper, it could definitely be B tier or even A tier. But right now, I think it's gotta be C tier. Now, next up, we have the Ryzen 5 7600X. Now, this one's actually gonna be a six core 12 thread CPU. So you're gonna get a little bit less multi-core performance potentially, depending on your setup. However, it is gonna go ahead and actually rival the 5800X 3D. This one is not over $300. It's coming in at roughly just $198 over on Amazon. Once again, links in the description. And to be honest with you, I think that's a great price for this CPU. And so for that reason, the fact that you're getting onto AM5 with the better platform, I do think it has to slot into A tier, but that platform is more expensive. So actually overall, I still feel like the 5700X 3D is an overall better deal for gamers specifically, but you will be getting some nice to haves with AM5. Now, next up, we do have actually the 7900X. And I'll be honest, guys, even though this does give you 12 cores and 24 threads, it's a lot of multi-core performance. I just really don't like dual CCD designs from AMD on their current microarchitecture design, where there has to be some significant latency when going from one CCD on the left, all the way down to the IO die on the bottom, and then back up to the CCD on the right. This can cause latency, and it's not often, but it sometimes can cause some weird issues or maybe some, you know, lower 1% lows in games. And so for that reason, even though it's a very powerful CPU, I'm actually going to go ahead and slot this thing all the way into D tier because it's really no faster than the 7600X in gaming. And it's coming in at a way higher price of $366 roughly. I just really don't think this is a great CPU for gamers, but it could be a good option if you're just looking for multi-core. Now, next up, we have the i5-13600K from Intel. And I'll be honest, guys, I think this is a great value CPU. Not only are you gonna be getting six P cores, but you're also gonna be getting eight E cores, making this pretty good for multi-core performance. This thing is actually giving you basically identical performance to the 7900X, which is just around 5% faster than the 7600X. So it is actually gonna be noticeably faster than that CPU and give you more multi-core performance. And coming in at a price here, guys, of for the KF version around $270. Yes, it is more expensive, but I do think overall, this is gonna be a better CPU for a lot of people out there. In fact, I really, really like this one. I think it needs to be 
top of A tier. Not quite S tier. There are some better CPUs in my opinion, but I do think it's better than the 7600X and the 5700X 3D. Now, next up, we have the 7700X, and this is a great CPU. It's eight cores, 16 threads, no E cores for all you out there who just want a single CCD option from AMD. This one is great. And in terms of performance here, guys, we are talking about a CPU which is basically identical to the 13600K. However, this one is coming in here, guys, at $274. So I think this is just about as good as the 13600K, but AM5 can be a little bit more expensive. So I think I'm actually gonna go ahead and slot this one in just above the 7600X. Now, next up, we have the 7950X, and this is a great CPU for multi-core performance. However, I do gotta mention, it's basically identical in terms of performance to the 7700X, and you are gonna be spending roughly $486. That's a lot more expensive, and so I think this this is a B tier CPU for gaming, but it is a very powerful CPU overall. Now the 7900X 3D, much like the 7900X can have those dual CCD problems as if you fill up the six cores and it's expecting you to have an eight core in certain games, unlike the 7950X, it's probably gonna be crossing over to the second CCD a lot more often, making it basically no faster than the 7950X on its 1% lows. It's a little tiny bit faster, but honestly, I think your experience is gonna be basically identical and you are gonna be losing multi-core performance and potentially running across a few weird issues with scheduling. So for that reason, I think this is a bottom of D tier CPU. I really don't recommend buying this. And I think it's a bad gaming CPU and I don't even think it's gonna be a great option for multi-core stuff either as the 7900X is gonna be even faster for those multi-core workloads. Now, next up we have the 13700K. And while this is not only gonna give you eight P cores, but also eight E cores making it really, really excellent for multi-core performance. It's also gonna be coming in here at a price, guys, of roughly over on Amazon. Once again, affiliate links in the description of $345. Now for $345, giving you roughly 4% more performance than the 7700X, it is a bit of a hard sell over that CPU. And I do feel like while this is a really, really great gaming CPU overall, and it definitely does have more multi-core performance and it's on a slightly less expensive platform, I think it kind of ties with the 7600X, but I think I'm gonna drop it right on top of the 7700X because sometimes you can find some good deals on the 13700KF. So there we go with that one. Next up though, we are gonna be looking at the 13900K. And I'll be honest with you guys, while this is gonna give you some really excellent multi-core performance, as this should give you eight P cores and 16 E cores, Unfortunately, it's also very expensive and very power hungry overall, something that the X3D processors don't have an issue with. And I mean, in terms of the price, yes, it's come down in price pretty significantly, but we're still talking roughly $451 over on Amazon. And so for that reason, even though it's a really, really powerful gaming CPU, I actually think it needs to go into C tier because of that power draw in price when compared to something like a 13700K, which is nearly neck and neck with the CPU. Yes, a 13900K is roughly around 4% faster than the 13700K, but I just don't think many people can justify that extra expense and power draw. Now, next up, we do have the 7800X 3D, and this one is just gonna be roughly another 3% faster than the 13900K. However, it does come in at a lower price and far, far lower power draw. And for that reason, not only is this gonna be potentially the fastest gaming CPU on the market, depending on your setup, but with that low power draw and pretty affordable price on the new AM5 platform coming in at $340 discounted right now, I think that this is a great CPU to buy in 2024. I highly, highly recommend it. And I do think this has to go into the S tier. This is just such a great gaming CPU. It has none of the weird dual CCD issues. It's got that X3D cache, which is great for Ryzen and all the other benefits we just mentioned. And then finally, we do have the 7950X3D. And on paper, this is potentially the best CPU on the market, but it comes in at a higher price than the 7800X3D. And although it doesn't have a ton of dual CCD issues, it can be a problem as there is only X3D cache on one of the two CCDs 
so only eight of your cores have X3D cache, and that means that if a task accidentally goes to the wrong CCD, which I've used it and it absolutely can happen and it can be a real pain to set the CPU up correctly, especially for novice users. Well, I just don't think this is a great experience for most people. So it's a good CPU overall, but because of its issues, I actually think this needs to go to bottom of C tier. And I just wish they would go ahead and put x 3 on both chiplets next time around, as if they did something like that, it could easily be a top of S tier CPU. But there you have it, guys. That's what I think about the current new CPUs in 2024, of course, before the Ryzen 9000 series comes out and before Intel's new 15th generation, or should I call it Core Ultra CPUs, come out with their Arrow Lake processors pretty soon as well. But if you're in the market for a CPU right now, hopefully that helped you out. Again, affiliate links in the description below, but let me know your guys' thoughts in the comments below. Do you agree with this list or what would you change? Go ahead and put together your list in the comments below. I'd love to see what you think and I'll see you guys in the next video. If you made it to the end of the video, be sure to drop a like. Every time you do so, AMD and NVIDIA release new GPUs. Also, if you want to see more, check out one of these related videos. You won't be disappointed.